so now we will prove the galvan mark theorem so this is for commutative cis or algebras with identity we identify this abstract cis star algebra with continuous functions on a compact hausdorff space so the compact hausdorff space we already have that is the spectrum of the cis star algebra that we know is a compact hausdorff space and we will show that the galvan transform is actually an isometric isomorphism which is also a an algebra star algebra homomorphism right so it respects everything and thus we will be able to identify uh, the cis star algebra as continuous functions on a compact hausdorff space okay so let us start galvan's so, neimark theorem okay so this is one of the fundamental results in this uh, theory so let a be a uh, commutative so that is important commutative unital cis star algebra so it has identity that is also important we will have a result for non unital cis star algebras later then the galvan transform so galvan transform remember is x going to x hat where x is in a and x hat will be a continuous function on sigma a right then the galvan transform is a star isometric so it respects the star operation it is an isometry and an isomorphism so it is star isometric isomorphism so isomorphism here would mean algebra uh, homomorphism which is one one and on two right so it it respects everything so from a on to c of sigma a right so that is your uh, continuous functions on compact hausdorff space which is c of uh, sigma a and you have uh, elements in a which are identified as functions now okay so this is what we start with today proof so recall that so we proved this cis star algebras are symmetric that means uh, x star hat will be x hat bar right the star will go to the complex conjugation on the other side we call that cis star algebras are symmetric okay so because it is symmetric uh, the star operation goes to the complex conjugation we already know that the range of the galvan transform is dense right so hence because the range will be closed under complex conjugation we know that it separates points and it is an algebra so it is dense by stonewall's theorem right so hence the range hence the range of the galvan transform is dense in c of sigma i right continuous functions on uh, sigma i okay we need to show that uh, it is everything right and the fact that the galvan transform is an isometry okay so it suffices to show that the galvan transform is an isometry because once it is an isometry the range is closed but it's dense so it has to be the whole space right so then it becomes an onto and everything else is there clear right it it takes star to st star which is the complex uh, conjugation on the other side because the cis star algebra is symmetric it's an algebra homomorphism etc we have already seen right so it is enough to show that the galvan transform is a is an isometry so it suffices to show that the galvan transform is an isometry okay so that is what we will uh, we will show okay uh so note that since we are on a cis star algebra the norm of x star x right this is the cis star identity right equal to norm x square 
this we know. Okay. So, for x in A define define y equal to x star x then y star is equal to y right. So, x star x is a self adjoint element in fact, it is a positive element even though we have defined these things. Uh, look at the analog of the operators right if I have an operator t, t star t is a positive operator right. So, these such elements are called positive elements in the c star algebra. Uh, so, y, y star equal to y simply says that it is a, a self adjoint element. Okay. So, hence now we use the c star identity for uh, for the element y. Okay. Uh, I look at y to the 2 to the k. So, 2 to the kth power of y. Okay. So, norm of this equal to well y star is y. So, its powers will also have the same right. So, it will be self adjoint. So, I can write this as y to the 2 to the k minus 1 okay, whole star. So, this this elements uh, are joined right because it is y to the 2 to the k minus 1 times y to the 2 to the k minus 1 right. If I multiply these two, I am going to get y to the 2 to the k. So, norm of this but now it looks like this right. So, I have an element it is a joint times that element right. So, this is equal to the square of the norm of the element right. So, that is y to the 2 to the k minus 1 norm square right by c star c star identity. So, I can continue this right. So, now y to the 2 to the k minus 1 I can write again as uh, y to the 2 to the k minus 2 star times the same thing and then apply right. So, continue. So, by induction by induction we get. So, these are all equalities right. So, I get y to the 2 to the k norm equal to uh, norm y to the 2 to the k right. So, norm y to the 2 to the k ok. So, well we have this now remember the spectral radius formula spectral radius. So, let us recall all that rho of y equal to spectral radius. So, this is the supremum of uh, lambda mod lambda with lambda in the spectrum of y lambda in the spectrum of y and remember that this is also equal to the uh, supremum norm of the Galfand transform of y, right? So, so hence, hence the supremum of the Galfand transform. So that is y hat infinity. So this is equal to the spectral radius. This is equal to so spectral radius. We have a formula which connects the spectral radius with the norm. So that is m k going to infinity. to the k. So, I, I just take this uh, subsequence right which is 2 to the k y to the n and then you take 1 uh, one by n right take the norm and take the 1 by uh, n root and then limit n going to infinity that is the spectral radius. So, I am just taking a subsequence and but this is equal to norm y right because of this. So, what we have proved is the supremum norm of the Galfand transform that is the norm on the other side is equal to norm of y right. So, that is the isometry part, but we have done this only for y uh, which is self adjoint right y only for x star x right. So, also we need to show this for all elements in the c star algebra norm x square equal to. So, now you take any x uh, in the c star algebra we had defined y to be x star x. So, norm x square equal to x norm of x star x via the c star identity which is equal to norm y right because x star x is my y which is we just proved that this is equal to the L infinity norm of the Gulf uh, the supremum norm of the Gulfan transform. Uh, but what is y hat? So, y equal to x star x right. So, y hat equal to 
x star so it is a algebra homomorphism so x star hat x star hat is x hat bar right and x hat so this is mod x hat square right. So, this is equal to modulus less x hat square the supremum norm which is the square of the supremum norm right. So, I started with norm x square I ended up with uh, supremum norm square for x hat right. So, this implies that the Gelfand transform is an isometry so, Gelfand transform is an isometry ok. So, this is the proof of the Gelfand Neymar theorem. So, what we have done is to identify the uh, Caesar algebra with with a class of continuous functions right. So, continuous functions on a uh, compact Hausdorff space and uh, just keep in mind that for for uh, continuous functions on a compact Hausdorff space this is entirely trivial right. So, if x is compact T2 trivial meaning the Gelfand transform is an identity is the identity map and then once we have calculated or the multiplicative linear functional this becomes a straightforward thing right. So, x is compact T2 I look at C of x as my uh, sister algebra then sigma of C of x that is the maximal ideal space or multiplicative linear functionals can be identified with x right it is homeomorphic to that and the Gelfand transform becomes the identity uh, map f going to f right and so it is obviously an isometry and this happens for all commutative unital sister algebras ok. So, that is that is what is happening that is what is Gelfand Neymar theorem is ok. So, this is a powerful theorem which we will use in the spectral theorem and so on ok. So, let us continue. So, there are some more results we have to do before we can get on to spectral theorem. Now, let us look at uh, two Banach algebras. So, suppose B is contained in A ok where A is a commutative commutative Banach algebra Banach algebra with identity ok and B is also B is a subalgebra right B is a commutative Banach subalgebra ok containing identity. So, B is smaller ok. So, B in itself is a Banach algebra right, but it is sitting inside a bigger Banach algebra A and B contains the identity as well ok. So, if you go back to the definition of the spectrum it was defined depending on the algebra right whether lambda E minus x is invertible in that particular Banach algebra. So, when you have two Banach algebras there are two definitions of the spectrum right. So, let me let me define that ok. So, for x in B there are two spectrums there are two spectrums ok. So, what is the first one? So, first one will be with respect to B. So, sigma B so, I put that B to say that spectrum is with respect to B well what is this? This is all lambda in the complex plane such that lambda E minus x is not invertible right, but not invertible in B right. Now, the uh, Banach algebra is important where is it where is its inverse right. So, B is the smaller one the inverse may not be in B inverse may be in A ok. So, it may be invertible in A, but need not be invertible in B ok. So, sigma A would be the same definition except that not invertible in A right. So, clearly A is bigger. So, it, ha it may have the inverse. So, sigma of A sigma A x the spectrum with respect to the bigger uh, Banach algebra will be contained in the spectrum with respect to the smaller Banach algebra right and the, the question is whether they are equal and things like that. So, we will look at it and we will see that when A and B are Caesar algebras with identity then the spectrum is uh, same ok. So, Caesar algebra the nice things happen that there is no difference between the spectrum for a smaller subalgebra or a bigger algebra. So, so let us let us try to prove that 
okay so proposition suppose a is a commutative is a commutative banach algebra unital banach algebra unital banach algebra and b contained in a uh, so close sub algebra close sub algebra with identity okay so the unit is the same okay if x is in b and so this is the condition the spectrum with respect to b of this point x so this is a uh, compact subset of the complex plane is nowhere dense in the complex plane. So, say, remember that spectrum is a compact subset of the complex plane. Assume that it is nowhere dense in C, then the spectrums are same. Then sigma b x is equal to sigma a x. We already know that the spectrum with respect to a is contained in spectrum with respect to b, right. We are saying they are equal provided the spectrum with respect to B. So, that is the bigger spectrum if you want that is nowhere dense right that is a meager set in the complex plane ok. So, let us prove this. So, let lambda naught belong to spectrum of x with respect to B ok. Now, spectrum uh, with respect to B is nowhere dense ok. So, because of because of nowhere denseness there exist lambda n in in the complement such that lambda n converges to lambda naught right in the complex plane right because the spectrum is nowhere dense. So, it can, cannot be an interior point. So, I have always this uh, lambda n coming from the complement of the spectrum. So, lambda n e minus x will be invertible for all uh, lambda n's right, but lambda naught minus e is not invertible in B right because lambda naught is in the spectrum ok. So, note that note that lambda n e minus x converges to lambda naught e minus x right. So, these things are invertible ok in in B right. This is not invertible in B ok. So, because of that the norms of lambda n e minus x should uh, inverse uh, the norm of the inverse of these elements that should go to infinity right. Okay, so, let us claim that. So, we claim that we claim that lambda n e minus x inverse. Now, they exist right, but they cannot converge because if it converges it will converge to lambda naught e minus x. Of course, one has to justify the statement. So, this goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. Okay, so, let us see why. Okay, suppose not if not well. So, I have a sequence. So, these are positive numbers if it is not going to infinity there is a subsequence which is bounded right. So, if not uh, so, we will assume that this is this itself is bounded ok. So, assume that uh, if not by passing to a subsequence passing to a subsequence we can assume we can assume that lambda n e minus x inverse is less than to some constant c right for every n ok. So, we just go to a subsequence uh, to say that this happens ok. So, but then for large n large n we have. So, we need to find the contradiction. So, norm of lambda n e minus x minus lambda naught e minus x. If I look at this norm the x goes away and I have 
this is less than to lambda n minus lambda naught less than to c inverse. Okay, so you will see why c inverse and all that. Well, let me write this c inverse because of this c inverse will be less than or equal to uh, norm lambda n e minus x inverse inverse. Okay, so for a particular reason I wrote it like that. Uh, so, this is trivial right because lambda n e minus x minus lambda naught e minus x is just lambda n minus. Uh, so, more it will be less than to modulus of lambda n minus lambda naught x goes away and lambda n is converging to lambda naught. So, for large n it is going to be less than to c inverse, c inverse is some positive number right c is something which we got here and c inverse is some positive number. So, take that as a epsilon then mod lambda n minus lambda naught is less than to c inverse for large n and c inverse is less than to uh, whatever is here. So, this the, the that vector the element and this element are same. So, if you recall how, how we proved that the um, invertible elements are open. Uh, so, that was by proving that a minus b less than to norm a inverse inverse implied b is invertible right when i write a inverse a is already invertible in that case b is invertible so that means this element will have to be invertible right so this implies lambda naught e minus x is invertible but that's a co contradiction it's a contradiction okay so that means the claim is true so hence mod lambda n e minus x to the inverse right. So, that goes to infinity to the minus 1 goes to infinity ok. But this is happening in B, but B the norm in B and norm in A are same right. So, this this is happening in A as well. So, this implies hence so lambda n lambda naught e minus x cannot be cannot be invertible invertible in A either right because if it is invertible I have lambda naught E minus x inverse and right because if if lambda naught E minus x inverse x is in A then because of continuity of the inverse uh, uh, inverse map the lambda n e minus x inverse will converge to lambda n lambda naught e minus x inverse which will contradict the fact that norm of lambda n e minus x inverse is going to infinity right? it is supposed to go to the norm of the other element right. So, it cannot go to infinity ok. So, that proves what we want. So, the next proposition Now, what we have, what we have done is uh, for uh, for commutative Banach algebras with identity, uh, we have the spectrums to be equal, provided the spectrum with respect to the smaller algebra is has uh, 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 is nowhere dense in the complex plane, right? Okay. So suppose A is a unital Cistar algebra, unital. Is the algebra, okay? And uh, we have the situation, and script B contained in A is a unital subalgebra, unital C star subalgebra. So both are sub uh, C star algebras, okay? So these are the nice situations always, and in this case, uh, so the unit is the same, okay? Whether it is A or B, I have the identity, okay? So if x is in B and x is invertible invertible in A right. So, this is always the uh, problem if x is in B we do not know if x inverse is in B ok. So, x inverse may exist in A, but need not exist in B, but in the case of C star algebra this cannot happen. So, if x is in B and x is invertible in A then x inverse actually exists in B itself ok. So, it is invertible in B. 
So, the spectrums will be same right because invertibility uh, in the bigger algebra and the smaller algebra are same. So, the spectrum will be the same. So, so as a consequence the spectrum with respect to the smaller algebra is same as spectrum with respect to the bigger algebra. Okay, so, the, um, this is something which is um, which is very important. So, if you if you look at uh, when you when you did functional analysis you saw the spectrum of an operator and so on. Okay. So, the spectrum of the operator you define it uh, as uh, as a spectrum with respect to the space of operators right the, the bounded operators on the Hilbert space one can actually go down to a subalgebra generated by that operator that is what this says. Okay. You will still get the same. Okay. So, let us take x and b and let y equal to x star x. Right. So, y is a self adjoint element and because of that let c be the c star subalgebra generated by y generated by y okay. with identity of course. So, c generated by y and identity. Okay. So, then of course, c will be contained in uh, B contained in A, right? So A is the bigger C star algebra, B is the smaller one, and I'm taking one element from B, and then so X is in B, so Y, which is X star X, is also in B, right? So this is in B, and I'm generating a, the I'm looking at the smallest C star algebra containing uh, Y, and that will of course be contained in B. Okay, so if X is invertible in A okay. so that is the assumption right y is also invertible in A right because it is x star x right. So, y is also invertible in A okay. since C is commutative with identity C is a commutative C star algebra. with identity. So, we have all the Galfan Neymar theorem and things like that we just proved right and all the all the information about the spectrum right. So, C star algebra with identity the spectrum with respect to C of y. So, y is a self adjoint element in the uh, C star algebra C the spectrum of y will be contained in the real line then. Right, we we saw that if x if y star is y, y hat is real value, right? And range of y hat is the spectrum of y, right? Everything with respect to the C star algebra C. But this is nowhere dense in the complex plane, right? Nowhere dense in the complex plane. Okay. So by the previous result, by the previous result sigma c of y will be equal to sigma a of y right. So, I am looking at c as a c star subalgebra of a and the spectrum with respect to the smaller sigma algebra, uh, smaller uh, algebra is nowhere dense right. So, uh, both the spectrums are same right. Hence 0 is not in the spectrum with respect to c. Right, because y is invertible in A. So, if y is invertible in A, 0 is not in the spectrum of y with respect to A, but the spectrum with respect to A and spectrum with respect to C are same. So, 0 is not in the spectrum with respect to C either. Okay. Hence, y is invertible uh, in C which is contained in B. So, it is invertible in B as well. Okay. So, thus x inverse equal to y inverse times x star right. So, remember y equal to x star x right. So, if I uh, x inverse will be y inverse x star, but this is in B right because y, is, y inverse is in B because of this line and x star is also in B. So, product is in B. 
okay. Okay. and of course, the spectrum thing follows immediately from follows from the first statement. Okay. So, what we have proved is uh, in a C star algebra there is no issue with the spectrum. So, you can start with an element look at the C star algebra generated by that element and define the uh, spectrum. Okay. Uh, now, what we need is uh, so we will we'll prove uh, the uniqueness of the norm. So, well maybe I can just mention it uh, here. Uh, so, remark okay, before we go ahead we can look at this remark uh, in a sister algebra in a sister algebra with identity with E the norm is unique. Okay. So, what does that mean? Uh, you cannot change the norm. Okay. This is because we have already seen that for uh, this, this is sort of easy from Gulf and Neymar theorem uh, because if x, if I take the norm of x, this is norm of x hat, right? And x hat, this is the uh, well, so maybe we can write this in for the silver joint elements first. So, y equal to x star x then norm y equal to rho y and norm y is equal to norm x square and so on. Right. So, you cannot change the uh, norm because then you will change the spectral radius as well. Spectral radius changing meaning the uh, algebra uh, the product will change. Right. So, for a sister algebra the norm is unique you cannot change the norm and uh, have a sister algebra right with the, with the, without changing the uh, product which is defined. Okay. For Banach algebra it is possible to change the norm appropriately at least for some cases. Okay. So, we will stop here and we will continue with uh, studying sister algebras and we will also look at uh, sister algebras and Banach algebras without identity in the next lecture onwards. Okay, so, let us stop here.